Over the years I have seen the inside of many car factories, but none that could claim James Bond as a customer. Fittingly a former AF bomber base in Gaydon, north of Oxford is the home of Aston Martin. Peeling off the M40 and following the sign that read Aston Martin and Jaguar Land Rover, the two are neighbors, I drove along a rather innocuous road for a couple of miles following the directional signs until arriving at a roundabout. Alongside us was an immaculate, Swiss registered 1970s Aston Martin V8 Vantage, the same as driven in Bond Flick, The Living Daylights and by Roger Moore in The Persuaders. We were greeted by an impeccably dressed gentleman who welcomed us to the home of Aston Martin. After being signed in and given directions where to park, the large gate glided back to allow me to enter the inner sanctum. As I crested the small hill and my first glimpse of the facility, which commenced operation in 2003, in front of me was a chromed Aston Martin Vantage, mounted on a large boulder. I just stopped and stared at this glorious automotive sculpture. I swung into the car park, noting the sign stating Aston Martin parking only and parked my car in the VIP guest area with the other brands. A large stone facade building, with huge timber doors located beyond manicured lawns across a small bridge over a motorway to die entry. At one end of the moat, seemingly floating was a DB11, at the other was a stunning blue vanquish. The foyer contained a concept of the forthcoming Aston Martin SUV, the Deeds, a first for the brand as well as a Red Bull Aston Martin Coupe. Once again we were welcomed. This time by Jackie Irwin, our beautifully groomed hostess with a beaming smile, bubbly personality and encyclopedic knowledge of all things Aston Martin. Now before we go any further, I must mention that tours of the Aston Martin facility are freely available, providing you are an owner or customer. So, it was a huge privilege for unique cars to get an inside look at the home of this iconic automotive brand. After a coffee and introductory chit-chat we set off along a row of significant Astons including the DB10 from the last Bond movie Spectre. And the company timeline greeted us on the way to the sealed factory door. Once inside, I immediately noticed a few things. It was very quiet, it was laboratory clean, it was smaller than I expected and best of all, it was full of people, not robots. Utopia. While an Aston's build is managed by a high-tech barcode system which can be viewed anytime by its owner anywhere in the world. The cars are still essentially handmade by 650 dedicated craftsmen and women. And to ensure the timeless skills aren't lost, Aston Martin works closely with the regional tech schools where the trades vital to the continuation of Aston are taught and jobs for the future created. A win-win for all. Like Savile Row suits, very few Aston Martins are bought off the rack, each one is tailor-made with customers personalizing in detail the features of their cars. From the pattern and color of the stitching to the other end of the spectrum, a one-off, exclusively designed car, the only limiting factors are imagination and budget. On average, it takes 200 man-hours to build an Aston Martin and to put that into perspective, Neil Armstrong took just 109 to land on the moon in 1969. The chassis and bodies are a marriage of steel, aluminium, magnesium and other exotics including carbon fiber. Robots bond the panels together, though some welding is still undertaken. Each interior takes 70 hours to complete and while some buyers are selecting Alcantara trim these days, most stick with leather sourced from Scotland. It was fascinating to watch the leather being molded into place on the seat frames while enjoying the expensive aroma of the soft leather. All hides are graded by zones 1 through 4, depending where they were on the animal. 1 is the softest and 4 is the coarsest.